I saw a really interesting story on CNN uh, concerning a, a, a big, mis uh, allegedly mysterious crater that is opening up uh, in Siberia, Russia. And um, when you see the video footage, you see, <laughs> you can see the ground moving. Yeah, it's really interesting. And uh, some uh, there's all kinds of theories that are, you know, trying to explain what's going on. You know, from from the ridiculous to the zany to the ludicrous to the, you know, <laughs> to the idiotic to the kind that just makes you go, hmm, <laughs> what well, what's going on there? I first heard when I first heard that story, I thought Godzilla. <laughs> And somebody woke up Godzilla. <laughs> ah, shucks, now we're in trouble, yeah? <laughs> oh, my, my, my. But anyway, I, I think some scientists were supposed to go down there today into the hole and see, you know, what, examine what, what's going on, yeah, what, what's happening. The, the, the common consensus seems to be that it is, um, that it has to do with global warming. And, um, you know, because there's a lot of weird things going on all over the world, even on the reservation. There's some wicked things happening. Um, for example, where I come from, on the Cheyenne River Sioux Reservation in South Dakota, they had some really bad uh, uh, rainstorms a couple months ago, and even, even up to last month. And uh, some people were saying they've never seen storms like this before. Uh, in recorded history, it's really, really dangerous. And uh, after the storms, I, I, you know, it was raining so much, and the, and the rain is is going down. Uh, you know, it's it's doing something to the to the ground. Um, it's not just your normal. Uh, it rains, it soaks up, turns into mud, dries, and whatever. It seems to have a, a more lasting effect. And that parts of roads have been caving in, uh, literally just falling in, yeah, falling into the ground. Uh, and so they've had to close a number of roads, uh, and people had to take the long way, yeah, to to get around to going to certain communities. Um, and and to see the pictures of this just freaks me out, yeah, because I I know those areas like the back of my hand, because I'm from that area. And to see those roads like that, it, it, it's just kind of freaky, yeah, just freaky. And uh, part, you know, most of the roads are missing because it's sunk in, yeah, just sunk in, sunk into the ground, yeah. And and it's, even the it's hitting the res, yeah. <laughs> We're all affected. See, that goes to show you, you know, just because you're Indian, that don't mean you're any more special than any anybody else. What's happening all over the world is happening to us too. Yeah, and for those of you, some of you may remember earlier this year in, in England and Scotland, they've got some of the worst uh, thunderstorms they ever got in their recorded history, and they had flooding. Yeah, the 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 water was going into the ground, and there was so much of it coming down that it uh, basically, um, uh, you know, did something to the. Um, the ground, you know, kind of loosening foundations or something like that, and and all hell broke loose. Um, which is, you know, it 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 caused a flood. Yeah, just a large part of the countryside just flooded. Yeah, so you have things happening like this all over the world. You know, it's, it's, it's I think there's a lot of things like this happening, and it's just not all of it is being reported. And um, all this got me to thinking of a really old Lakota star knowledge story called The Wraith. A long time ago, on Mother Earth, the land was one big, huge, and gigantic continent. And everybody that lived on this continent got along with each other. And everything that lived in the water got along with each other. So there was harmony all over the world. The humans got along with the plants and animals. Nature was in balance. So there was a lot of peace and contentment and happiness all over the place. 
Then after a short time, the humans began to get a little bit too prideful. They started to think a little bit selfishly, and they started to create things that would make their life easier. That's what they thought to themselves. And soon they created more things and they were inventing more and more things and their technology began to develop. Our stories say that the technology was so advanced that the people could travel underground, under the water, through the air at really fast speeds and at great distances. And the technology they had was far greater than what we have today. And I'm making this recording on September 8th, the year is 2002. And the technology our ancestors had was even greater than what we have today. Now a lot of this technology that they developed was achieved by violating the balance of nature. They were polluting the waters, they were polluting the air, and this was affecting the plants and the animals. And so that peace among all creation began to disappear. Then groups of people started to think they were smarter than each other. They separated into their own groups and each group thought it was smarter and more advanced than the others. And they would try to prove it by developing, you know, more and more technology. Well, there was a group of humans that was spiritual. And they were going around to the people trying to warn them that if they kept doing what they're doing, that the earth will cleanse herself and everything on the earth will be destroyed. And life will start over again. But the prideful people, they didn't want to listen. But the spiritual people kept warning the prideful people of what's going to happen. But the prideful people would not listen. Then one day, the Mother Earth began calling to her children to come to her, to come into her. And so the spiritual people who are our ancestors went under the earth and they stayed under there for a long time and while they were under the earth the earth began to cleanse herself there were earthquakes and tornadoes and hurricanes and fires and floods every weather disaster you can think of that's what was going on on top of the earth and so the prideful people were destroyed and their technology was destroyed too they were swallowed up inside the earth and as their technology was swallowed up it was destroyed it, so you can't find any trace of it today and after a time Mother Earth told the people inside of her that they could come out now. So they did. And when they came out onto the Earth, they saw that everything was changed. Everything looked different. It was a brand new world. There used to be some mountain ranges that would run from east to west, and now they ran from north to south. And so the people were in amazement and in wonderment, and they gave thanks to the Creator and to the Mother Earth for helping them to survive. And the people came out from the Earth at a place that's called today Wind Cave in the Black Hills of South Dakota. Then the animals began to notice something. They began to notice that some of their relatives were missing, and they knew their relatives were not bad people. And they couldn't have been destroyed. Well, it was the birds, the winged nations, the ones who could fly at great distances, told all the other animals that the great, big, giant 
continent no longer existed and that it must have broken up into smaller pieces because as they were flying over the earth they could see like other big continents all over the earth and as they flew close to these continents they could see that there were animals that were living there and some of them were their relatives and so this is what the birds told the other animals and so this is why for example in Africa there are these birds called ostriches and in Australia there's an, a bird that is almost identical to that their relatives and they were separated and now they're living on different continents and soon a lot of the animal nations began to notice that their teoshpayas were broken up they were separated all over the earth and so this made the animals you know sad and and angry I mean they were happy that they survived but they were sad because they couldn't see them anymore some of them and they were angry because it was not their fault that this happened it was the humans fault and so the four leggeds had a meeting with the animals that move and grow and in this meeting they decided that they were going to destroy all the humans from off the face of the earth because it was the humans who upset the balance of nature it was the humans who violated nature and so it, all this separation was caused by the humans and they wanted to destroy the humans so it would not happen again now at this meeting there was a little magpie that was listening the other animals didn't know he was there and he listened to the whole meeting and then he flew back to the other winged nations the other birds and he told the birds about that meeting and what was said and the birds began to agree too they wanted to destroy the humans as well and they were really getting angry and you know they were saying things like yeah that's right you know my relatives are over in in another continent and I can't fly that far so I'll never see them again and you know they were really upset and they were getting drunk on rage and anger then a voice spoke a soft voice and it wasn't loud it was not angry it was not necessarily a happy voice but it was a voice that when you heard it you just quiet it down and this voice came from an old owl and the owl said that the humans are part of the two-legged wamakhashka and so if they destroy the humans they have to destroy all of the two-legged wamakhashka but the thing was that the bears were also members of the two-legged wamakhashka and he said that the bears represent wisdom on this earth so if the animals destroy all the two-legged there will be no wisdom on this earth and there cannot be happiness without wisdom and so the birds were going to each other oh yeah I am that <laughs> you know saying things like that and so they agreed and they realized that yeah the two-legged cannot be destroyed because if the two legged are destroyed then what's the purpose of life all the wamakhashka on the earth is important all creation on the earth is important and everybody has a right to live on this earth and so if one of the wamakhashka is no longer on the earth it's going to affect the rest of the wamakhashka as well and so the winged nations the birds decided to meet with the four leggeds and the uh, things that move and grow and they did and they held a really big meeting and there was a big debate because the four leggeds were so drunk on 
wanting to destroy the two-legged. And so the owl presented their case before all the animals, but it did not change the mind of the four-legged. And so the owl said, well, maybe we should have a contest. If the four-legged win the contest, then the birds will stand by and let the four-legged destroy the two-legged off the face of the earth. And if the winged, the birds, if the birds win, then the two-legged must be allowed to continue to live on this earth. And so all the animals agreed to this contest. And it was decided that the contest would be a race around the Black Hills. And the race would start on the east side of the Black Hills and it would go around the Black Hills clockwise four times. And so all the animals agreed to it. Then on the day that the contest was to start, all these really powerful animals were lining up at the starting line. There were buffaloes and mountain lions and deer and antelope and really fast animals. And also the really powerful birds were lined up too, the eagles and the hawks. And, and amongst all these really fierce runners, this little magpie came that was listening in on that first meeting. And he was just a little magpie, and he didn't look very powerful. So all the other animals were making fun of him, even the strong birds were teasing him. And they were saying things like, How could this little magpie who was always yapping away ever hope to expect to win such a mighty race as this one? He is so lazy, he does not even fly south for the winter. But that little magpie, he didn't care. It didn't bother him. He just wanted to be in the race. And so he was stood on the race and he's just a really small bird and he was all at you know, at attention and he was ready to go with his eyes looking ahead and and then the owl started the race and all the animals started running. And so they ran and ran and ran. And as they were coming close to the starting area again, they would really run hard. And dirt would, you know, kind of start piling up on the east side of the Black Hills. And the second time they were running around, they were running even harder. And they, they were some of them were starting to get tired, but every animal was a determined runner. They were all determined to win. The four-legged wanted so badly to destroy all the two-legged. They ran so hard they wanted to make sure they won. And the birds were thinking to themselves that we have to have wisdom on this earth. We have to have wisdom. We cannot let wisdom be destroyed from this earth. And so that would be their thoughts. And they wanted to win this race. And they came around close to the starting area the second time and they would really run harder. So more dirt started piling up into a hill on the east side of the Black Hills that was not connected to the Black Hills. And they would start in on their third time around. They were running harder and harder and harder. And pretty soon the animals' hooves and their paws and their you know their feet were starting to break open because they were running so hard and so there was blood on this racetrack and they kept running and running and then they were coming to the starting area again the third time and they ran even harder and again a whole bunch of dirt started piling up even higher on this hill that they were making and they started around their fourth time. Soon the animals began to die of exhaustion and they just couldn't make it. They were running themselves to death. 
and still there was blood on this path and they kept running and and, th and some of them were dying and they just kept going and going and going and now they were coming to the north and there were only two animals left there was a buffalo and there was that little magpie those were the only two runners left just imagine that this little magpie and this huge buffalo the final runners all the other racers had died and these two were really tired but they were still trying to win this race and so the magpie didn't think he was going to make it and then he got an idea he decided to fly up on the buffalo's hump where the buffalo couldn't see him and so he did he flew up on top of the buffalo's hump and he just sat there and rested for a while and the buffalo turned around and he thought that the magpie must have died and so he slowed down because he thought he was the only runner and he was going to win as they got close to the finish line the magpie flew off the buffalo's hump and flew over the finish line first and he won the race and so this was how wisdom was saved by a little magpie but the thing that I want to point out is how powerful the Wamakhashka are we are all Wamakhashka all of creation is Wamakhashka after this race was over another meeting was held and all the animals that were still alive gathered these were the animals that were not in the race and they all gathered and the four leggeds said they would live up to the agreement they said they would not destroy the two leggeds but the four leggeds and the things that move and grow they wanted to add one more thing to this agreement they said that the humans must be responsible now for all of creation and the humans were to see that the animal nations do not overpopulate that they did not underpopulate that they should take care of the ground so that things will always grow and also that the humans should take care of the water so that there will always be life and so all the animals agreed to that one additional item so just think because of this race us humans are still here now the bears are members of the two leggeds along with us humans and there's a really sacred reason for that and that should not be spoken on a recording or spoken about in public that's a ceremonial thing and so I'm not going to mention that so today we humans have a responsibility to live in balance with all creation with all Wamakhashka we are not over the plants and animals we are not over the earth instead we have a responsibility to them we are the caretakers of this earth we don't own the earth and when we need food we are only supposed to take what we need we don't kill a whole bunch of animals and then stock them up in a freezer or things like that we're only supposed to take what we need and when we hunt we're supposed to do it in a respectful way so that all of creation will be honored this is why and our ancestors had sacred songs they sang before they went hunting and and that they had ceremonies and songs sung after the hunt was over so that the people may live so that everything may live so that the balance of nature will always be in balance and we're not supposed to be doing things like you know killing an animal and you know just taking some of the meat and cutting off the head and putting the head on the wall those animals are our relatives that's like you know killing your grandpa and then putting his head on a wall I don't think we would do that 
Well, at least I would hope not. So we shouldn't be doing that to animals either. And today you see sports teams with all these mascots as animals, and they, some of them look really stupid and funny. And, and that's also showing disrespect to the animals too. So today we're messing up. Today we are neglecting that responsibility. And there's evidence of it all over. New viruses are coming. There, some of them have already been here. As time goes on, if we continue to neglect our responsibility to all of creation, it's going to get worse. Even now, there's mosquitoes bringing this West Nile virus, and right now it's just taking a few people, but you never know, it could get worse. Today, humans create all these insecticides to kill insects, and as a result, the insects get stronger, so the insecticides can't kill them and at the same time when they bite us it could make us really sick and even bring us death in some areas people are feeding cows to other cows and all of a sudden you have a mad cow disease going around today the humans are really mixed up and have really neglected this responsibility and so you know that someday these animals are going to remember the promise they made. And the promise was that if we neglect our responsibility to all of creation, then the animals are, will now come among the two legged and destroy us all off the face of the earth. There are several reminders of our responsibility to all creation. One of them is that racetrack. Today, around the Black Hills, there is a red path that goes all around it and this is the path the animals ran on and towards the end of the race they ran so hard that their hooves and their feet and their paws broke open and blood spilled all over the path and so the red color of this path is from the blood of these animals that were running and so when we see that path we're supposed to remember those things another reminder is that hill that was built on the east side of the Black Hills. The area that's near the starting area, every time the animals ran near that area, they would run really hard. And so they were kicking up dirt, and it formed into this big giant hill. And our ancestors named that butte Matchopaha to honor the representative of wisdom. Matcho is bear. Baha is a mountain or a really, really big hill. And so that's why they call it Bear Butte today. These are reminders of our responsibility that we're supposed to be caretakers of this earth. And it also is supposed to remind us that if we neglect our duties as caretakers of the earth, the animals can destroy us. And the earth will be cleansed again just like in the beginning of the story. I think all of this goes to show you that the earth is alive, the earth is a being, and, um, and, and she is being assaulted like never before uh, in this time period. I, I say that very specific because if you could kind of read between the lines in the story I was talking about, it says something like this happened before that um, uh, humans um, created uh, technology at the expense of, of nature, at the, ex at the expense of uh, upsetting the balance of nature. It talks about these things in stories, and it says our ancestors, and that means everybody. It, it doesn't just mean certain people. Yeah? And um, we have to be realistic when you're looking at the, the age of the earth and how old uh, she is, and when you look at uh, cultures' stories concerning that, and how, like in Lakota culture, it talks about um, their stories that talk about these creatures that are no longer here, and it says that their bones are buried in the badlands. Yeah, and there there's several um, locations on this on this earth where a lot of these 
uh, creatures were were uh, rounded up um, by humans, and then they were they were um, massacred at you know in in several locations on this planet. And when something like that happens, that leaves a weird energy behind that could bother you. It could make you sick. Yeah, it could uh, really affect you in a in, in a long. Um, in, 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 in not a long way, but in, in in a way that will has long lasting effects, and so the instruction in those stories says you're not supposed to live there, where these locations are, yeah, that you're not supposed to live there because of because of what happened, you know, because of the massacre of these beings that were causing havoc upon the earth, upon all you know, to against all people, and that there were that they found a way to destroy them. And so this is why, what they did. And so nobody's supposed to be living in those areas. Um, so you know, and, and they're very desolate, yeah, very desolate areas. So um, makes you makes you think, yeah. When you when you look at today and and you see, you know, uh, where where people have found oil, you know, things like that. Uh, or other kinds of minerals uh, that are used um, for uh, the you know to power technology and and and, and our households and, and everything like that. So now, what we have today is a result of these of these um, you know what we're using to power our technology today is is because of what 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 um, you know, is is we got that from you know these creatures that were destroyed, but how did our ancestors get their technology? What did they use to power their technology? Yeah, that's an interesting thought. It has to do with the the center of the earth. Yeah, and uh, it, it, this this is really interesting because uh, you know it talks about that and and also. Um, um, you know, it's, I can't, I shouldn't say too much because uh, this is, uh, I can't, I can't be, you know, giving all, all kinds of secrets like that and stuff. But it's, it, the bottom line is that, that, you know, what, what happened in the ancient past and really, really old stories is talking about, um, people upsetting the balance of nature. It's about the most important thing. Uh, and this has long lasting effects. Yeah, and um, when that when that happens, you know, the for nature to rebalance itself takes a long time. And um, but you know, to to start, you know, she has to totally cleanse herself, and that has, happens with uh, as the story said. You know, the, you had floods happening, and you had tornadoes and hurricanes and you know, massive storms and and earth moving and you know things like that. And, uh, you know, and, and today, you know, you have scientists that are uh, sending uh, certain kind of waves into the air, yeah, into the ozone layer, and they're sending them into the earth, and and uh, and, and pe- people are, you know, there's all kinds of reasons people are giving, you know, um, some say it's because of, uh, of, uh, security reasons. Some people say it's to manipulate the weather so that certain parts of the world will be able to grow things more so than other parts. To and, and this is this is talking about economic development, yeah, and and causing economic disaster for certain countries. So this is really getting um, some crazy thinking here, but that. That's starting to happen, yeah. So when we look at these stories, they're talking about, um, you know, a time period like I said, where people could uh, travel far distances through the air and through the ground. That's what these stories say. So it makes you wonder, yeah, what what did they use? And then of course some people will say, well, where's the evidence? Well, when the earth cleanses herself, she really cleanses herself. Yeah? She takes everything into herself. And how are you going to find that? Yeah, Because the further it gets 
to her center, it disintegrates. So there is go there is not going to be physical evidence, but there are stories that record this. Yeah, there are stories that say lots of things like this, and lots of tribes have these kind of stories. It really makes you wonder. Yeah, they're not fantasy, and um, they're, it's it's a lot of these things can be proven. Yeah, for example. There's a, a, a something, um, what can we call it here? Um, it's a, it's, there's a certain pathway. In one of our star knowledge stories, there's a certain pathway in one of the constellations that leads someplace. Uh, I'm not going to say where that is, but it leads someplace. And um, we've always known that, that location of it. And... Um, and you know, we, we there's you know, people who um, who talk about. You see, you see, this constellation has seven seven stars, and if you see an eighth one, that's not a good sign. Yeah, within that constellation, an eighth one is going to appear, and and what that is is that means something is coming. Yeah, if something is coming, and it's going to initiate the next Earth cleansing. So. Um, this is, you know, <laughs> this is a really old, old story, yeah. And and um, my belief is that that same thing happened before, yeah. That that's what happened to last time too. They saw an eighth, eighth star in this certain constellation, and soon after they saw that this cleansing started. Yeah. So. Uh, but it talks about, you know, a way that people survived it. And the only way they could do that was living living without religion, yeah, living without ceremonies, living without sacred items and and uh, being in tune to yourself so that you're in tune with nature so that you can hear the earth voice calling you, telling you where to go for safety according to where you live. That was the key, yeah. But to hear that voice requires you to live a certain lifestyle, and that's what Star Knowledge teachings are all about. That the universe inside of you has to be understood before you can understand that one out there. Because right now you got a lot of, lot of. Um, oops, excuse me. My timer went off. That means my my burritos are done. <laughs> I don't know why that went off. That was not even set. <laughs> no, I don't have burritos waiting for me. <laughs> anyway, sorry about that distraction. There. Um, but yeah, there's right now. There's a movement out there that is looking the wrong direction. Yeah, they're looking out there and they're making all kinds of shit up. You know, like they're saying, oh yeah, there's some. People came from there 60,000 years ago and they had medicine wheels on their spaceship and they landed over here and, 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 and there were, uh, you know, there were three dialects uh, uh, they called Lakota, Dakota, Nakota and they were the fourth group and, um, and, 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 and they, um, they married into the Lakota people and, and, and their relatives are still living with the Dakota people and the Lakota people are protecting them that they're still here on this earth and, and Lakota people are protecting them and, and, and there's a great leader among them that it's the prophet, whatever, whatever. And all of that is just nonsense. It's total nonsense. And I can break every story that they put on by using Lakota star knowledge. Yeah? For, uh, for one thing, uh, in the beginning of our people, um, uh, there were four dialects and they were from here. They were not on, you know, coming from, you know, the fourth one didn't come from the stars. Yeah? And also, uh, after we come on the surface of the earth, we travel, we travel, we travel, and then we find a homeland. And then this uh, earth cleansing happens, so uh, we have to go back to safety. So we're the only place we know for safety is where we came out of. So we go back to that cave that we come out of. And we go there for safety while the earth cleansing is happening. 
when it's over, we come out of that cave again. Now we're coming out of there the second time. And everything changed. Yeah, like the story is saying. So, um, during this, uh, you know, before we go back in there, yeah, before we go back into that cave, we have, excuse me, we have to make a journey, you know, from our current position back to that cave. And in that journey, this is a story that's only in two books that I know of. Yeah, my book, which talks about Tessica, and another one. Uh, I think it's the Sixth Grandfather. I'm not too sure. But um, this story talks about how um, the people were looking for that cave. Yeah, they were, they were going back to that cave because they knew there were, a cleansing was coming. So they made a great journey. And um, when they... You know, they, they, it says that they they followed this river that was going south, and it was uh, it was um, it started in the southerly direction, and they were heading um, north. Yeah. Um, so they follow this river until they get get to the location, and then they have to cross some land, and then they find the cave. Okay. Now a lot of people think that's the Mississippi River. That's not. Yeah. Because the story says that after the cleansing was over, that which used to be north and south is now east and west. So when the story says that before the cleansing they were traveling north, you have to tilt the whole continent on the side. And, and, and then you, you see what river they really were following. Yeah, They weren't following the Mississippi, they were following a different river. <laughs> but as they were following that river a group of them wanted to go the other direction so they went uh, so that, that group uh, they said their goodbyes their toksha you know, they said that to the, to the relatives and they headed the other direction so they headed south now remember that's before the mother earth cleansing okay so in other words um, what what is south um, at that time period is today's east. Okay, so and when the story says they headed south, they didn't. They, some people think, oh, they headed to South America. Oh, there must be uh, Indians living in South American uh, a jungle someplace that have the fourth dialect. No, 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 you're wrong there too. Yeah, because you have to remember south at that time is today's east. So you have to look eastward. And that makes you think. Where where did they go? Yeah. So <laughs> it's a good story, yeah. It's a really interesting story to think about and and um but it shows you, you know, that, that um people were going in different directions and uh and and, and you know, that that people survived. They 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 survived by you know, listening to the earth, observing the earth, and following, you know, the safe areas. Yeah. So it, it is lots of interesting stuff in these really, really old stories. And um, the way you can tell when something is a, an ancient story is um, as long as it doesn't say anything about good versus evil, the chance is really good that that's an ancient story. But as soon as you hear something like bad spirits and and uh, oh, they were smudging themselves to scare away the bad spirits. As soon as you hear that, that's not ancient. That's that kind of stuff is within the past few thousand years. Yeah, those are called ohunkankan. Yeah, what I'm talking about is ehani. That's long time ago from the, you know, creation of the universe. That's millions of years old information. Yeah, that's where the the knowledge is. That's where the answers are. In those stories, so there's two different kinds of stories, yeah. So um, anyway, um, that story I was talking about that comes from these Ehani stories. Yeah, these are, as some people say, Ehana. Yeah, and um, so what it talks about there is that um, everything happened here. It didn't come from outer space. Yeah, there were no spaceships that landed and 
And uh, because it, it, when when you look at those stories with the false star knowledge stories, that shows that humans don't have uh, the, their stories. Always say humans are kind of dumb and, and that we couldn't do anything without the without the help of um, you know a breeding with alien. Uh, uh, higher civilizations, yeah, and I think I think that's kind of disrespectful to think like that. And when you say honor your ancestors, and, and you have these uh, fake star knowledge people saying that you know some aliens came here 66,000 years ago and intermingled with the Lakota people, and um, you know it, and that's how Lakota people got their spirituality. It, it makes it look like well, before that we were idiots. I don't think so, yeah. And like I said, these are just people who are living in fantasy, and I've seen their videos on on YouTube, and and everything they put out is total shit. Everything. When they try to speak Lakota, they speak it incorrectly. They don't conjugate. They don't. Um, this is some. This is something you have to. When you learn how to speak Lakota, you have to know how to conjugate. And a lot of people don't do that. And that, that shows to me they don't speak the language. Yeah? I'll give you a really short example of what I mean by conjugate. Um, in Lakota, um, you have this word, tehila. This means to love. When you want to say, I love, you say, tewahila. If you want to say, I love you, you say, techihila. You see how that word changed. It's just one word, but it keeps changing. When, it, when you want to say different things. Yeah? So first I said to love, then I love, and then I love you. In Lakota, that is starting with tehila to tewahila. That transforms then to techihila. That's called conjugation. Now what some people do is they'll say, uh, okay, um, I, they'll get a dictionary, yeah? and they'll say I is mie, and love is tehila, and you is nie. So they're going to say, mie, tehila, nie. And they think they're speaking Lakota. But that's not. That's retarded talk. Yeah? That, that's idiots. That, that's not even Lakota at all. Yeah? Because that's, that's totally, totally, totally not Lakota. And, and so this is, this is what I'm saying. Yeah? That, uh, that uh, when when um, when you're speaking Lakota, you have to know how to conjugate. That's the key. And once you learn that, then it's easy. Yeah. Because in the beginning, it's really really hard. But after you learn this conjugation process, then it's really easy to say, "You love, you love me." Yeah. We love, we love you. We love them. You know, kind of things. So you, you learn how to conjugate in those ways too. And like I said, in the beginning, it's really difficult. But once you get the hang of it, then the language is really easy to speak after that. Yeah? That's the key to speaking Lakota language. So, um, yeah. So, I'm just, today I'm kind of talking about earth changes and, and also, you know, that um, you know, key to really uh, understanding or living um would be to live in harmony, yeah, to live in, in in peace. But that has to be, it has to begin within you. Yeah? You have to be able to do that to yourself, with yourself. And then, um, uh, you know, you'll be able to uh, do this all around. So, um, so this is, uh, this is, uh, yeah, what I'm talking about. And also mentioned some things about um, there's a very, very false version of Lakota Star knowledge going on out there that is uh, based on total, total um, nonsense. Um, there's nothing, uh, there's not an ounce of truth in what they say because there's nothing, uh, you know, the, what they do is they they take um, ideas from other cultures like say Greek or uh, Egyptian or something like that and then they, 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 they just mix it all together yeah? 
Uh, there's a, a Dakota guy from Yankton Sioux Reservation that's really involved in this, and he's spreading a lot of nonsense. And um, when you see him, he calls, you know, he has a beaded Egyptian symbols on his uh, his uh, <laughs> his regalia. <laughs> Doesn't even make sense, yeah. And um, so this is this is uh, like I said, this is. This is what happens when you go the opposite direction, yeah. And that you could say that's that's the uh, that's the Iktomi way of doing things. Iktomi is the trickster in our stories, and uh, uh, what he does is um, is, is uh, he does one thing and says the opposite, yeah, or says one thing and does the opposite, and uh, and, and the, he focuses on the outside yeah he's a very vain person and he focuses on the outside and um whenever you do that you're heading down a road of uh duality so focusing on just your skin color for example there are a lot of people that do that and that's that's racism it's it's ethnocentrism it's also paternalism and it's dogma uh when people say well my way is the only way to do something or um you know are, I, I know what's wrong with your culture. If your culture was more like my culture, there, you wouldn't have so many problems. You know things like that. That's ethnocentrism. Uh, when you say, "Well, I, since I am better than you, um, you should do it my way, and then it'll work." That's uh, paternalism, and everybody knows racism. They all go together. Yeah. So um, living this way is really, really unhealthy, and that's that's what happens when you focus only on your exterior and then people carry that further yeah they focus on out there yeah somewhere out there that's where their focus is and there's absolutely no foundation inside of them and this is uh, this can drive a person crazy yeah this is how a person becomes which is uh, they're so crazy that it's like there's nothing inside since they're communicating uh, from their exterior, they're avoiding their sacred center, and th this means they're they're not focusing on their inner, interior identity, whatsoever. So eventually, it erodes away. Yeah, and that's how a person becomes empty. Ganashkiya. Yeah, they get so empty that they go crazy. So that's how that works. Yeah. And um, so th when you look at these people who um, uh, follow this false version of Lakota Star knowledge, um, that's what they're doing. They're empty inside. Yeah, They're really empty inside, so they're looking out there for answers. When actually all they got to do is turn around and go the opposite direction. Yeah, Because Lakota Star knowledge says before you can understand the universe out there, you have to understand the universe within you. That's natural law, because reality begins within. That's the way it works. <laughs>